Hello and welcome to my channel. I am Imitari, and today I will be starting my playthrough of Oath Sworn into the Deepwood. I will be using four characters, as you have to. I'll be using two full characters and two companions just to get a feel for the variety of the different types. The characters I will be using are the Pentient, which I have named after myself, Mimitare. The Priest, which I have named Morbius, because gotta keep up on the memes. That's not gonna date this video at all. Those will be my two full characters. My companions are the Ranger, who I have named Chuck Norris for obvious reasons. And Kerr, the Rogue type, which I have named SI Agent. The SI is short for Spanish Inquisition because. Nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition! Thank you for that. Anyway, let us get right to the start of the campaign. Green mud sucks at your boots. Every stride a challenge as you trudge through the rain. Your hands grip the thick iron cable of the wire road, pulled taut through rings, sunken into the trunks of hideous trees. For days now, it has been the only evidence of humanity's existence in the deep wood. Clinging to this lifeline has not worked for everyone, though. You are one less than when you left Verum. It was nothing any of you saw, just a thrum in the wire behind you, and then a scream disappearing into the dark. The memory is fresh in your mind, but this is not the time to mourn, not here. As you travel, vines and black tree trunks spattered with sickly pink cysts block your view ahead. Things slither away and rustle through the undergrowth, but they are of little concern. One cannot afford to jump at every noise in this place, or else you'd go mad. It is only when the sounds slither towards you that you need to worry. Relief from walking through this overgrown hell is promised as the huddled profile of the fortress town of Bastone looms in the distance. They are the ones that sent for you. People have been dying here, though not of hunger or of the deep wood. Those don't leave much of a man when they're done. Something else is happening here, something that is leaving plenty of bodies. The crumbling city walls tower before you. As you approach them, you spot something laying at the base. Okay, my first choice. I can either explore the base of the wall or get out of the rain and head for Bastone's gates. I don't know about y'all, but I do not like being caught in the rain, so I will choose to get out of the rain and head for the gates. Oh, something I forgot to do. That's going to be a common theme. Uh, hit the instructions at the start, which is open mystery envelope A and place its contents in the center of play. Place the free company marker on location 21. Place the chapter 1 chime track beneath the map. Take the path A card. Okay, as you can see, the map is set up. My marker is on location 21. And the map board is on path A. So, so let us continue again. Getting out of the rain and heading towards the gates. The travel has been hard, and you think it prudent to get out of the deafening rain rather than be distracted. There's plenty to do here before nightfall. Instructions say, All all sworn gain a plus two animus token. Place location token 22 and go there. We have placed our token and moved our marker there. So now, we will continue. As you approach the thick wooden gate, a small slat slides unevenly open and a weary, coal-caked face peers out. Moments pass as he eyes you with suspicion taking inventory of your many weapons. Then one of you reveals the mark on your wrist. He grimaces. Hmm, free company, uh, Let me get this open. The slat slams shut, and you hear chains strain as a mechanism pulls the gate open, swinging out just wide enough to squeeze through. You move into the gateway passage and find it blocked ahead by an iron portcullis, a second layer of defense creating a quarantine area. In the passage with you is a single table, lit by a foul-smelling lantern on the wall. You hand him your papers. I'm sure you know the drill, the guard urges, as he thumbs through them. Arms extended out from your sides, he raps against you repeatedly with a short hollow tube of wood. He nods, then sniffs, satisfied you have brought nothing of the deep wood in with you. You've not come too soon. More bodies last night, he says, as he moves to a rickety table in the corner, to mark more paperwork. Papers say you're five. 
A grim silence from you answers his next question. Right then, an oath fulfilled, I suppose. He looks uncomfortably away and motions towards a logbook with ink and quill beside it. Make your mark. All right, our instructions are create a name for your free company. Define a key attribute of the free company by choosing which one of the following statements most accurately describes your company. Oh, Lord. The most important part of this scenario. What do we name ourselves? <laughs> We are the free company. Like and subscribe. Ha ha ha. I'm so witty. Our choices for the key attributes that defines our company are 1. You are faithful to the oath and to your God. You trust that your arm is given strength by more than mere muscle. 2. You are the last one standing. The ones who seal the breach and protect the innocent. Shoulder to shoulder, you will hold the line whatever comes at you. 3. The deep wood is fierce, but you're worse. You've never met a problem that can't be solved with a sharp edge. Four, death is a dance you know well. You flow through fights in perfect form. Training gets you only so far. The rest is raw talent. Five, discipline or death. Keep marching, keep moving, keep fighting until the job's done. Press in, press on. Well, considering we have the penitent and the priest, I think we are going... One, we are faithful to the oath and to our God, the Lord Morbius. You trust your arm is given strength by more than mere muscle. Instructions. All our sworn gain a permanent redraw token. Note this on your character card. The guard seals the paper with wax and nods to those outside the portcullis. With a slow grind, the iron gate raises to let you through. You understand your task. Find whoever or whatever is responsible for the unexplained deaths. As you step out onto the main thoroughfare of Bastogne, a sea of unwashed citizens churn through the mud, going about their daily struggle. Welcome to my glorious Bastogne, a voice chimes from your right. You all turn to the voice. A street urchin, caked in dirt under an explosion of dark hair, leans nonchalantly against the outer wall. If I hadn't been so clever, I might have tried to lighten your pockets. Looks like you're too much for me, though, right? You come out of the green all bristling with blades fresh from the wire. No, me ma made no fool, and that's why I'll let you pass without paying my toll. Now, I know what you're thinking. We need that kind of charitable citizen to show us around. Well, usually I'd say no, what with all my responsibilities around town. But for you, I make an exception. For today, and I make this place feel like home for you. Get you anything or anyone you need. Take you anywhere you want and keep you from running into the less reputable around here. Okay, I am given two choices, either to negotiate with the boy or ignore the boy and attempt to navigate Bastogne alone. Eh, we're, we're, a, we're a nice company. We, we like to help the less fortunate and the needy. And I get the feeling if I ignore the boy, he's just going to pick my pockets anyway, so we shall negotiate. Encouraged by the fact that you haven't left, the boy redoubles his efforts. Midge is a name. And there's none finer to see around these parts. It's clear of no more need of muscle, but I've another skill. I can read. That's right. I stand before you as a scout, guide, scholar, and sage. Midge pushes his way between you to block your way to the town centre. Also, there may be four of you, but I think you need another pair of eyes. He grins and shows a spread of four iron coins in his hand. You really should take more care of these. He holds out the money to you. See? I told you you'd not pay my toll. So, do we have a deal then? Well, I'm guessing I was right not to ignore him or else he would steal from me. So, I have two choices. I can reject his offer and attempt to navigate Bastion alone again. Or accept his offer and haggle with the boy. We shall double down and haggle with him since he was so nice to return my stolen money. Instructions. Perform a borrowing check difficulty 4. If you succeed, lose two iron. If you fail, lose four. Then gain ally core midge. So the way these checks work is I have I can either choose to sh take from this dice, take from this deck of cards, or roll dice. The breakdown of the deck is equal to the dice facings. So if you want less randomization, you can choose to roll from you can choose to draw from the deck as opposed to rolling for the dice. Let's look at the facings. We have one blank, one one another one, a two, a two crits, which would draw another 
either draw another card or roll additional dice, and another blank. And since the skill test was a difficulty four, I'm always allowed to draw or roll as many white cubes as I want. However, if I get two blanks, I will automatically fail the test. Everything else gets added up. And if I were to crit into a blank, uh, any blanks roll off a crit do not count. I don't think any of my things have a skill proficiency in bartering. So we are just going to roll. The game suggests to use the deck if you want less randomization. But I like rolling dice. Even though I am god awful on it. So we're going to use three whites. Hopefully. Uh, we're going to use four white dice. And hopefully I don't get two blanks. And hopefully I get up to four so only lose the two iron. And let's roll. Oh, we got it. Don't even have to roll the quit crit because I got the five. You know what? We're going to roll it anyway because, like I said, I like dice. Look at that. Seven. Easy peasy. Okay, so we will lose two iron. So we are down to ten, and we gain the midge ally card, and I just have to find that somewhere. Here he is. Here's midge, non-combat ally, mayor of Bastone. In Tavern or Pub, Midge grins. You're not sure what the difference is between the last two, but correct his expectations and explain that you need to know more about the bodies. He shrugs. Been nasty. They've been finding bodies and bits of bodies all over the slums for weeks now. Nobody does nothing until a noble was found dead and scattered about an alley. Realization widens in his eyes. Are you them, then? The house sworn? You nod and Midge grimaces. Bugger. We didn't agree no hazard pay. Ignoring the boy's comment, you begin to question him about the town. He tells you of various locations, and you begin to form a plan for the hunt. Bastone has many of the usual landmarks, and there is a banksmith and apothecary to trade with, for the supplies you may need for what is to come. Okay, let's see our instructions. Place location tokens 2, 3, 7, 12, 13, 14, 16, and 19. Okay, we're going to cut while I do that. And we're back. 2 is the archive, 3 is an apothecary, 7 is the underways, 12 is a market, 13 is the broken oak, sounds like a pub, 14 is the town square, 19 is the banksmith, and 16 is unmarked. And we get to choose where we want to go. You know what, it is probably good to get the lay of the land. It is probably good to get to the lay of the land, so we are going to town square Location 14. See if there's anything fun there. Smells of cooking pots and the sound of fervent bartering roll over you. Glancing around, you meet the eyes of the destitute peering from dark alleys and crooked doorways. The square itself seethes with people who retreat to give your party a wide berth when they notice you, creating an island in the rolling sea of bodies. You come to another area, bereft of people. At the heart of the square is a ten-foot-tall iron post driven permanently into the flagstones. Heavy links hang from welded bolts, and the large ring of black suit scores the area at its base. Others you have seen of this kind are made from wood. How many people are they burning to warrant one made of iron? You canvass the area and discover that this functions as a crossroads between East and West Bastone, and it seems no violent deaths have been discovered. All right, more instructions. Gain clue token 2. If you have clue token 1, I do not. Place location token 4. So I will gain clue token 2. And now I can choose to go to another location. One of the, all the previously mentioned locations. I just realized that as you can see on the top of the track, there is something that says time 2. What I should have been doing is as soon as I went to a location with a token on it, I would move the location up to this track to signify the passage of time. And if these and if some things are covered or empty at the end of this scenario or beginning of the combat phase, I will either gain have to resolve city effects or I will gain tokens or unique items. So I will try to do that from now on. 
And now I still have a location to go to. You know what they say, nothing loosens lips like a drink. So we will go to the Broken Oak. 13, get a pup, see if we can't get some rumors. A well-tended inn shows promise. Entering, you find an amber fire glowing in the hearth. It is warm, dry, and seemingly inviting. Hot as peace, a burly man says, smiling. His eyes are slightly distant, revealing that his attitude may come more from a bottle than his heart. The yams are fresh and the rum's dark as a deep wood. A newcomer steps up beside him. Something's not fresh because it's green, Bram, especially if it's supposed to be yellow. He turns to you. He tries at least, and he's not lying about the rum. Grey Cane. The man introduces himself with a nod of deference. I am the eyes and ears of this town. The mouth more like, Bram offers from behind the bar. I'm also the bankroll of this establishment, he retorts with a knowing look to Bram. After a few pleasantries, Grey Cane leads a conversation around to the question of what he can do for a free company in Bastone. Hearing of your hunt, a light appears in his eyes. The son of Lord Arden's been the talk of the town. Word is, he's been frequenting a certain sort of alley being less than noble. That's where they found his seal, the noble crest, bathed in blood, no body. The crust blame the common folk, but I think it's something else. And I'm glad Davenish had the forethought to call you in. And instructions, or... Gain clue token one. Okay. If you have lo clue token two, place location four on the board. We do, in fact, have location clue token two, so we put location four on the board. And that seems good, so we will go to location four, which is also unmarked. So we will see what happens when we get there. Using the information you have gathered and, with the help of a couple of street urchins from the east side, you find the spot the noble was killed. You walk the shady alley. Even the drunken dying avoid the end of this street. Bloodstains still spatter the walls, the rain running down them having little effect on the marks. You search the area for something to help you in your task. New instructions. Perform a spot check difficulty four. Okay, we knocked it out the park last time with the dice, so we're going to do it again. Four dice. We're going to give him a roll and hope we can pass a difficulty four. Oh my lord. Look at that. Look at that. Three crits and a two. But well, we got to roll the crits, right? What's the point of rolling dice if you're not rolling the crits? Amazing. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Sometimes you gotta roll a hard six, and we rolled a hard ten. Um, if only I had this kind of luck in Oricum, right? We most definitely succeeded, so. Your eyes follow trickling water down the walls, watching as it gathers in the gutters, then runs towards a nearby sewer covered with a hatch. Curious, you haven't noticed other large hatches. A coincidence? Examining the hatch, you find it's not fixed and sits off kilter. Your nose protests, but your guts tell you this is it. Let's see. Instructions. All all sworn gain a redraw token. That is cool. We already have a permanent redraw token. And now we start, we're going to have the next tutorial with another one. Everyone has a plus two animus now and a redraw, or reroll in my case, since I will almost exclusively be rolling dice. You squeeze through the hatch into a dark maze of rough-hewn passages, your torches glowing pale blue in the noxious air. Ankle deep in waste and muck, you slog through winding tunnels, kicking aside rats and brushing away cobwebs, looking for any clue as to what might be behind this. Around one corner you stop, there is a splashing, a thick, heavy motion lumbers towards you from a shadowy side passage. Sounds of chittering and nervous clicking conjure memories of past ambushes, prompting each of you to draw your weapons. Whatever it is, it is low and hunched. This is no rat, 
This is something much larger, and it's moving fast. Okay, more instruction. Secret to citizen. Set your die to one if you wish to attack, or two if you don't wish to attack. Well, since I am playing solo, I don't have to make a secret decision. So, I can either... If half or more of the players have chosen to attack, we get one otherwise prepared to defend ourselves. Hmm. I don't think it's... I don't think it's Master Splinter down here. So, we are going to attack. And let's see what happens. Before it is even clearly in the light, practice moves. See your weapons passing through the approaching mass. There is a wailing scream. You step back to see what your handiwork has brought. A filthy man, a rat catcher by the look of his gear, lays at your feet. He wasn't what you're looking for. The body stops twitching as you clean your weapons. Not your finest moment, but there is no room for guilt here. A rapid search of the corpse reveals nothing of value. Faces stern, you press on. Whoopsie. I can't keep running people over. I'm not famous enough to get away with it. You wade through the muck, trying to pick up a trail. The sewers are a labyrinth of crisscrossing tunnels. More than once, things bite at you from beneath the water, and at one point, a swarm of small, dark shapes descend on you. More instructions. Each oath sworn performs a survival check, difficulty 4. Each oath sworn that fails a check fails to scare off the things around them. They lose one hit point. Ew. Let us do the checks. Uh, we will do four dice for everybody. We will not be rolling crits just to get this thing a little bit faster. So, for the Pentient, Mimitare. One, two, three, four. Passes, no crits. Priest or Lord Morbius. Oh, two blanks and a three. It is a hit, so the priest will lose a hit point. Walker attacks a stranger. Oh, just barely, but of course, but of course, the rats are afraid of the mighty Chuck Norris. And last, the sneaky SI agent. Passes easily. So only the priest took a point of damage. Which should be fine. I think the priest has healing. Oh, when we start with instructions. Add a time token to the time track. Do not trigger any effects on the time track. After several hours, you eventually find a junction that runs along the outer wall of the city. You can see the deep wood through the hole where a mammoth foundation stone has somehow shifted. Blood trails concentrate on this point from all directions, as if bodies or body parts have been forced through the gap. The trail carries through the opening and leads off into the deep wood. In the blood stains, you make out the tracks of several clawed footprints. You get the distinct impression there is more than one of these things. All right, we have a choice. We can either set a trap for these things and wait for them to return to the hole, or squeeze through the hole and follow the trail while it is fresh. Well, considering I just finished killing an innocent person, I don't want to set a trap. I'm a little more cautious right now, so we will attempt to squeeze through and follow the trail while it's fresh. You squeeze through the small hole and find yourselves in the no man's land between the city walls and the deep wood. You look off to the tree line and check your compass. This item is near sacred to you, as well as all free companies. It is the only chance you have of navigating your way back after you enter the deep wood. You steal yourself and head in. More instructions. Add a time token to the time track. Do not trigger any effects on the time track. All Osor and gain a redraw token. The trail is not hard to follow. Would you stop automatically doing that? The trail is not hard to follow. The sickly brush is torn and trampled by many feet. Half a league from the city walls, you come across a large circular depression littered with scraps and bones. That is when you see her, the hulking rat-like form of the broodmother. She is twice the height of a man. Her back undulates with rats that swarm around her as she lifts her huge snout, testing the air. Her great head of rotten fur and gnawing teeth rolls towards you, and with a ravenous hunger, her eyes meet yours. Dun, dun, dun! Instruct the final instructions before the encounter. If you have the mystery chest, open mystery chest one. If you do not, 
Oh, this is just the setup for the monster encounter. So we will hit encounter. What does that do? Ooh, there's the brune mother. Look at that giant f ugly rat. Instructions. Let's see. After the encounter, continue to the epilogue. Okay, that is it for this one. We will do the encounter in the next setup. But first, one, two, three, four, five, six. Or our story ended on six, which means at the end of the story encounter, if this remained open, we would gain a... So at the end of the story encounter, since this spot remained open, we will get our battle flow token. So we are just chocked brimming full with tokens. That is it. I will see you next time where we face the brood mother and its horde.